So that's all very well in terms of the basic science. As a jobbing clinician, we all want to know what does this mean for me and my patients? Is there any evidence that I can take home that will help me treat my patients? Well, the first really good evidence that from randomized controlled trials that diet influences mental health came from the PREDIMED study. So this is a fabulous study. It was designed as a to look at primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. And again, it used a Mediterranean diet, because everyone loves the Mediterranean diet. There were three groups in the study. Uh, we just gave people advice, um, which of course we know nobody follows. Uh, there was a Mediterranean diet with extra virgin olive oil and a Mediterranean diet augmented with nuts. The bottom line, uh, I don't know if any of you followed the study. It was a, quite a controversial study. It was retracted and republished. Um, with no change in the data. Mediterranean diet did prevent cardiovascular disease, um, but it also prevented depression. So this was a secondary outcome of the study. So remember, be very cautious about post hoc analyses. But what you can see here, so you look at the hazard ratio uh, and fully ad uh, adjusted, you can see that the Mediterranean diet with extra nuts was associated with a odds ratio of 0.59. That's a 40% reduction in the onset of depression in that group compared to the control group. That's big. That's really big. Um, the Mediterranean diet with extra virgin olive oil was a 30% reduction, but this was not statistically significant because the error bars were too wide. So, I think this gives some good evidence of prevention, despite uh, the fact that it, the study was not powered for this outcome. So Felice did the first study called the SMILES trial. Um, this was a, a study comparing dietary, uh, dietary intervention delivered by uh, a dietitian as against a psychosocial support intervention delivered by a, a, a psychologist. Uh, and what, we, what you can see here, in the dietary intervention group was a, a much more significant reduction in depressive symptoms than we saw in the social support condition. Um, the effect size was 1.1, which is rather too large to be comfortable with, and an NNT of 4.1. These are very large effects. Uh, it's un un uh, 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 it, unexpect uh, it expectedly got a vast amount of attention, including uh, concerns about re uh, whether this w represented a true clinical effect. But fortunately, this has now been replicated, uh, and I will show you some of the data. A couple of secondary outcomes of that study, the most, uh, one of the more interesting ones, of course, is the effect of adherence, because not everybody that you put onto a diet adheres to it. And what you can see here, if we look at adherence in quartiles, you can see that the people who are most adherent had the greatest reduction in symptoms. The people who were not adherent to the diet, even though they were randomized to it, didn't change. So that supports an active element of the diet having an effect. Uh, the other interesting thing was the economic evaluation. So the study looked at uh, lost time, absenteeism, uh, from both paid and unpaid work. Uh, the study measured uh, healthcare utilization, how many times you go to your GP and the cost of delivering the interventions and the cost of the food itself. And we've, what we found was that not only was it effective, it was actually cost effective because costs were lower in the diet group than in the control group. So uh, total health sector costs were 856 lower and societal costs were $2,591 lower. So a reduction in direct healthcare costs and a reduction in indirect costs. And it was largely due to reduction in, in, in productiv uh, improvements in productivity and a few visits to health professionals. As I said, the study's now been replicated. Um, so Na uh, uh, Natalie Paletta in Adelaide has done a very similar design and found almost identical results. So you can see in her study a much more dramatic reduction in the Mediterranean diet than the, than the uh, psychological control intervention uh, in her study. So let me just tie this together. 
A dietary intervention delivered by a clinical dietitian has the potential to improve symptoms of major depression. The diet was cheaper than the baseline unhealthy diet, and I think this has some implications for the treatment of depression. Uh, obviously, it's likely to result in improvements to comorbid non-communicable disorders as well, uh, and it was highly cost-effective. So a couple of the tips that come out of the modified Mediterranean diet, I don't think that any of these will be terribly newsworthy to you, but you should, if you're going to snack, have fruit and nuts. You should have vegetables with every meal. Water's the best drink. Stay away from sugary drinks like poison. If you have to add fat, use olive oil. Uh, fish as a regular part of your diet. Um, whole grain breads and cereals. Sweets on special occasions only. Lots of legumes. Uh, dairy, two to three serves a day. And lean red meat, we actually found, was helpful. It's the one in our epidemiology did suggest that lean red meat was the one thing that was associated with lowered risk of depression. But we're all lazy, you see. None of us want to eat this stuff. It's much easier to get a pizza, to go to Hungry Jack's, and take a pill. So then the question is, is this possible? Can we bypass all this bloody hard work and eating healthy foods, eat the crap we want, and just take pills? So let me talk a little bit about supplements. Um, a really nice review was by Jerome Saris. So he published this in the American Journal uh, uh, last year. And here are his, his conclusions. Um, obviously, we often need adjunctive strategies to treat depression because the, treat, the therapies we got, while they're helpful, they're not helpful enough and they don't help everybody. Uh, we also know from the biochemistry that these nutraceuticals can modulate many of the neurochemical pathways that we're interested in. So what comes up as ping? Well, SAMI, um, methylfolate, omega-3s, and vitamin D all have positive trial evidence. There are isolated studies on things like creatine and mixtures of formulas. And there's negative data for zinc, folic acid, vitamin C, and inositol. So to show you some of the meta-analyses, this is folic acid. Uh, and you can see a trend, but not significant across all studies that folic acid is, might be useful. And there's also data for omega-3 acids, uh, omega-3s in depression. I'm interested. Can I do a sh quick show of hands? How many of you uh, suggest um, that your patients should take omega-3s? A fair number, yeah. How many of you have had the same patient come back a month later and say, Doc, thanks for that. I'm fixed. <laughs> yeah. Curious, OK. <laughs> so Jerome Saris did this fabulous study, and I was delighted to be involved in it with him. He thought, well, if all these little things, if all these little nutrients do a little bit, why don't we get a mega combination? We put everything that's useful together and have our turbo cocktail, and now we'll really be able to fix depression. And there's really good reasons for doing this. So zinc and SAMI uh, are associated with impaired neurogenesis in BDNF. Omega-3s and zinc modulate inflammation in cytokines. Folinic acid and SAMI have important roles in the one carbon cycle. 5-HTP, uh, SAMI, fish oil, zinc have uh, roles on monoamine dis dysregulation. Fish oil, folinic acid influence the HPA axis. And serotonin has important roles on the circadian rhythm. All of these are important. So surely this should work. So what Jerome did is an eight-week, three-arm, double-blind RCT, comparing SAMI alone, the combination of everything I just showed you, and placebo for adults with MDD. Uh, and so they were, these were people who were non-responsive to the treatment that they were on. It was an add-on study. The primary outcome was the Montgomery Depression Asperger rating scale. And what did, we, what did he find? By psychiatry standards, a reasonable sample size, 158 people. It was well tolerated. Uh, the SAMI group, no, nothing at all. No effect at all of SAMI. But the interesting bit is the combination therapy. So this is everything that we think should help. The combination therapy is in blue. Placebo is in orange. Placebo did better. In other words, this was iatrogenic. It made people worse. Does this make any sense to you? 
But it's a finding, right? It's real. This is what the research shows. Uh, I thought that this was spurious until last week, and I can't mention where I saw it, but I was asked to review a much larger study looking at exactly the same thing uh, in one of the very, very fanciest journals. And guess what? Combination nutraceuticals, iatrogenic. Made people worse, worse than placebo. So can we get around the eating a healthy diet and just take pills? I think the data is looking pretty dodgy. So, just to, su to summarize the dietary advice, just follow traditional dietary patterns. It doesn't matter whether it's Mediterranean, Norwegian, Japanese, Chinese. Food is food. Increase your consumption of fruits, vegetables, legumes, uh, lots of f fish oil. Limit your intake of processed foods. Um, replace unhealthy foods with nutritious foods. And I think supplements are a very uncertain value. I mean, the other advice that I sometimes give uh, which is more simple, is you ask the patients three things, right? To choose a food. Does it rot? If it rots, you probably should, it's probably okay to eat. Anything, the stuff that doesn't rot, you know, Tim Tams don't rot. <laughs> um, Coke's never going to rot. But fish will. So if it rots, good to eat it. Second question, does it have a brand? If it has a, an identifiable brand on it, don't eat it. Uh, if, it come, uh, if it has no brand, fish doesn't have a brand, broccoli doesn't have a brand, fruit doesn't have a brand. If it has a brand on it, don't eat it. And the third is, does it come from a factory or a farm? If it comes from a farm, eat it. If it comes from a factory, don't eat it. Those are my three rules. Different to tongue-in-cheek a little bit. <laughs>